name is Chantal and I've been laughing for about three years. Uh, my name's George and I've been laughing for about, well, since 2015. I'm Amelia, I've been laughing for around about six years now. I'm Jasmine and I've been laughing for about three years now. Willow and I think it's like four years. My name's Michael Barley, I've been laughing since 2008, so 14 years. My name's Rafe, I've been laughing for just under a year now. I'm Kobe, I've been laughing for almost four years now. My name is Noel and I've been laughing since April this year. My name is uh, Will and I have been laughing for I think about 17 years now since I was a, a wee bab. This would be my third Neo event. So I, I've been to about three, three weekenders and a day event. Pretty much all of them, but one that I missed. Every single one from six years ago, I've never not missed an event. This event will be my sixth. Eight, maybe, maybe more. I believe this is the 12th event. I have been to, including this one, four. This will be my sixth one. I've been, well, this is my third one now. However many it's been since 2017, that many minus one. is Jaden. He is a fae. This is my first weekend of playing him after my main character sadly passed away brutally in the, the woods. Uh, Jaden is a um, good boy fae who's lived a very long, long life and he's kind of a bit, um, he looks down on a lot of people because he's like lived so long and he's got some good backstory stuff that I'm, I'm not going to tell anybody about. Hopefully people will find out in a few weekenders and whatnot. Lots of secret, secret things. But yeah, he's, um, for the most part, he doesn't think he's better than people, but he he's quite uh, level-headed as opposed to my past character was, was very much shoot first, ask questions later. My character's name is Boris Slinky DeGrasse also known as just Slinky. Uh, he started his life just kind of wandering the roads, taking jobs wherever he could, and eventually came across the adventuring party, and uh, he lends his sword and shield to the party. He's uh, had many strange encounters, especially lately. But yeah, he mainly just takes jobs and does what he's told. My character is Yato Bloodbound. He was a very chaotic, very messy character who um, caused a lot of issues. Recently, upon dying and seeing the truth of their own mortality, they've kind of turned a new leaf and now they're all about um, preserving life and being a lot more laid back and uh, wise about their actions, seeing all of the consequences that their past life caused. My character is Celeste Alisu. She is a fairy with purple hair and she is a pinup model and is dating Charlie Hennessy. Charlie Hennessy is a very powerful individual in Blightfoot. To be honest, a lot of her motives at the moment are just trying to get over telling her parents to piss off, basically, as ghosts. Oops! My character is a pisky who got caught in a bad spell when exploring a cave and is now really old. My character's name is Vanilla Coconheart. He is a wood elf or an elemental nature elf who has grown up in the wilds. He is predominantly a hunter, but he's a leader of people who actually just enjoys being able to chill out and enjoy life. So I play Ra uh, Relorian, who is a ranger. A man who sort of travels around, doesn't really have motivation for anything at the moment. He encountered a group of heroes, did not know what was happening, and yeah, kicked ass and take names. My character, Dredgen, he's a dark elf, an undead elf from the frozen north. He comes from a very militaristic background, uh, living life as a monster hunter from a very, very young age. And now he's very, very troubled by his past. Um, a lot of his brothers were taken from him. He's one of few. And now he's he's kind of just a wanderer in Neothera trying to, trying to help people where he can and figure out his place in the world. Well, I play Baron, who is a... He's a dad, really. He, he goes around two big tower shields and he... 
of defends his people's walls, he's a protector, and he has absolutely zero offensive capabilities, which I find fun. I play a character called Soleil and Carmine. I am a, uh, a vampire prince, uh, a very, very powerful spellcaster. Bit of a kind of generalist, can do pretty much anything, but kind of a stuck-up asshole as well. Very big, loud commanding, but also like, you know, whenever you put a, a vampire in position of power, every single one of those historically has been pretty bit, pretty weird. Historically, of course, of all the vampires that have been in positions of power over the course of history. There has been so many good moments, it's really difficult to pinpoint a favourite. So we had a coronation recently and that was a really nice moment to see a friend like become king. Me dying was such a big, big moment as well because it was such a like out of body experience, me laying there dying and hearing everyone. It's like reliving, your, it's like living your funeral and that was such a, a weird but amazing experience to go through. But yeah, there's just so many, so many good moments of just finding my wife, other people dying and going through that and it's like, I don't, I'm someone who hasn't lived with a lot of death in real life, so it's really nice. It's, it's almost therapy for me to get used to it, if that makes sense. But yeah, it's been probably all the deaths, probably. It's when I killed Bastion because it felt like that was a point where Slinky really took a path down somewhere where he's going to start doing something big. Uh, before that, it was more just kind of being a sword and shield and front line kind of thing and not really doing too much. And now he's got a purpose and still has a purpose going on now. Uh, my favorite the moment has to have been uh, the battle with Thomas Al, where it was torrential rain the entire morning and it let up right as this giant demon came out of the woods and the sun just started beaming down and it, uh, the rain had settled on the ground. All of this smoke just rose up around them as they started like, stepping onto the battlefield. I always have a bunch of favourite moments, but they always change depending on the day. Today's one is last event, seeing Dizzy being taken off and him just looking back and saying, Celeste, look at my dumpy. I fell to the floor laughing. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot. Most of the goblin encounters I, I really enjoy <laughs> because they're, well, they're just so funny. <laughs> like last time they were just pretending to be sneaky and just walking along the sidelines and we pretended not to see them. <laughs> the first time I got to come out of the realm of shadows and strike down all the monsters around, that feeling of power just, as you see everybody fall to the ground and you know that you did that and everyone's going to pile on top of them. Oh, that has got to be the Dagda encounter. Um, specifically when he was in the woods, because, yeah, freaked me the hell out. <laughs> there are quite a few good ones. Uh, I think it would have to be one of the last player events I attended, we were introduced to Vadir. He's, he's quite a big character in the current setting now. And he came in with a very, very strong introduction by sending out smoke grenades and, uh, filled with gas to all the players. Everyone was going down, there, there was chaos everywhere. Everyone was yelling, screaming. It was really brilliant, it was so immersive. It was, it was very, very good. But, very tense moment. Yeah, my favourite moment was probably my second event where it was Baron's first personal plot point. Well, a random little girl came running up to him and hugged him. Uh, Baron, he doesn't, he's has memory loss, he doesn't really remember anything of his past, so this little girl comes up, hugs him, and he does no idea who she is. And it is revealed, oh, she's a ghost and she's Baron's dead daughter, which messed with him substantially. And it, I can say with pride, it was the first time Allah that I cried. One of my earlier memories was me and my friends. Uh, we wanted to make a uh, an, an item or an ability that would let us like hurt undead really, really well. One of the refs was like, okay, sure, just real quick, get this like crystallized elf soul and bind it in a torturous ritual to a magic sword and dedicated to the ice goddess. And we were like, okay, that sounds awesome. So then we went and did that. And then we did this big old spooky ritual in the forest. It was very intense. And then we got attacked by trees. But hey, we now do indeed have a cursed sword. Well, 
everyone sees it as kind of like this sort of nerdy thing which people are just running around in woods swinging swords and shouting thunderbolt at each other it's not it's um, much more than that it's more like a, an escape tool um, so if you have a bit of a crappy life in real life and come laughing and pretend to be someone else and be them for a weekend and they kind of express things that you couldn't express in real life and uh, have a good time. I think people should try laughing because it's an amazing sense of community. It's super accepting. Feeling the fact that you can go to a place and not be yourself and like let the real world kind of fade away and be someone that like maybe in real life you wouldn't get the chance to be. And experiencing that is really therapeutic in a way. For me personally, I find it to be very much a calming experience because I get to forget about me for a weekend and experience something that feels like it's bigger than myself. Laughing is the best form of escapism ever because you completely forget where you are and what you're doing. You know, you can feel cool, you can have moments that you can share with your friends and there has not been one person I've met who when I told them what laughing is, they've not gone, nah, everyone has gone. Tell me more. Because it's, it's just a great mixture of everything. It's like uh, the fun of cosplaying, but then actually getting to do something with your own character. It allows you to kind of do what you did when you were a child and just like be imaginative and crazy and do it all in a safe, safe space. If you want to be a bad person, you can be a bit of a bad person and rob people and stab people and that's all okay because it's all made up and we, we play with fake swords and stuff but uh, if you want to be the, the goodest good boy you can do so too and, and you can come back out of it and then be not that. If you're into you know any like acting uh, nerd D&D and stuff storytelling just role play in general then it is well, completely for it. It's a great way to make friends, build connection, build confidence really. Uh, it's great exercise as well. It's honestly I can't really think of a better hobby. Laughing's really fun, just in general. You get to be someone you're not and it, you just get to relax and it doesn't even feel like you're being a weirdo because everyone around you is doing the exact same thing. Laughing's just all in all a great experience. It's a good way to escape. Lots of camaraderie, lots of fun. You're going to be doing things that you never really would usually do, of course. Yeah, it's, it's all just great fun. Everyone's so nice as well. Everyone's a lot of fun. People need to come to laugh and try it because actually we have this perception in society that this is a nerdy and geeky hobby. But actually the truth of the matter is it's a hobby that builds confidence in people. It builds social skills in people. It also gives people a chance to get outdoors and enjoy being in nature, enjoying people around them and not on a TV or a games machine. In essence, it is living a different kind of life, giving you a chance to learn and to actually open your mind to new ideas. I think one of the main reasons why a person should like give laughing a go is because I feel like a lot of people do it for various reasons. People will do it because they would like to, you know, escapism is a, a huge thing. Um, I think it is one of the most productive and creative forms of artistic expression when it comes to like how you can, because uh, like with cosplayers, you can express you know, someone else's character and you can interact with people at conventions and sort of things. Laughing is kind of like the creativity of making something that is entirely yourself and your own and express yourself in that manner. And then you can actually like use it in a way. So it's not just like a portrait that you make and then you look at. It's a piece of interactive art. Yeah, I, I feel like it's um, it's a very good way to express yourself. Also you get to whack nerds in the field with a bit of foam, so that's pretty rad too. Try and find one in your local area if possible. Um, if not, um, one that you can get a train to or something. Don't go balls to balls on kit straight away because it gets expensive. And um, maybe try crewing first because crewing for most LARPs is free if not quite cheap. And that's a good way to start a LARP. Do as much research as possible before attending an event of any system. Look up into the lore and stuff, but 
definitely give it a go. I mean, you don't have to have an incredible character concept. You don't need to have, you know, the most friendly character. You don't need to be charismatic. You don't need to be well, incredibly confident. Careful how much you spend. <laughs> it is the most expensive hobby ever. Just throw yourself in. Like, you are going to have those, that, those, like, two hours of why am I here in a costume in a random forest playing pretend. Once you're over that, and it will take some time, it's the best thing in the world. Yeah, so just throw yourself in. Costumes don't have to be that expensive. Like, my my dress that I'm currently using, literally, is really cheap. It's just like a costume dress that I did a few adjustments on. My advice would be grab yourself from some base layers. You can find find something in a thrift shop. Even some of the basic stuff you've got at home would suffice, and just, just go do it. You'll honestly probably not regret it because it's such a great experience, and then you'll want to do it more, and that you skyrocket from there. I think, yeah, going with friends is like a good thing. Uh, go to a small community, it's not overwhelming. Just give it a go. I always say, if you're not into LARP, give it a go because you might find that you really like it and then you'll never leave and then you'll spend all your time and money into a game that you never knew you'd go to. Go out there, have fun. Don't try to be more than you are. Just go out and have fun. Look inwards to yourself and just think about how well you do on your own or with groups, uh, with the introvert, extrovert, that kind of thing. Because when I started laughing, I was very introverted as a, as, as a kid. Um, and my first like year of laughing, I hated it, but I just didn't realize that I hated it because I was on my own and I didn't have anyone to connect to. So I would say, like, really think of, like, would you, would you prefer to be on your own so you can, like, have the complete freedom of just being on your own doing whatever you want? Or think about whether you would prefer to go with, like, a group so that you can have a mutual support network of people that you know and trust. Um, to kind of like rely on. But during your first time, right, people will expect you to mess up in certain things, like your kid not be perfect. So don't worry about having the best costume ever or being the most dedicated like actor in role play. The most important thing your first time is that you have fun. Say yes to things. As your new character, it can sometimes feel daunting to like get started and uh, you're, you're not really sure what direction you want to go in. Say yes to things, get involved, even if it seems like, oh, that sounds like a really dangerous situation. Uh, my character's about to get into. Say yes to it, because the best role play moments are the role play moments where you said yes to something and now it's grown into a whole thing. And that's the stuff that makes your character.